Hi all, I have a very interesting game to show you from TSAC season 13, so the mega clash of the NNs, the neural networks. Leela playing Deus, Deus X, so uh, by Albert Silva, who is a really great columnist by the way for Chessbase, but has created a little bit of controversy over his entry uh, at TCEC. But anyway, a very interesting neural network engine in its own right, and a smaller network actually than Leela's but maybe better trained for its size. So there's an issue if um, it, a network could be a bit more heavy than it's justified if it's not properly trained. That's an interesting issue to bear in mind. But anyway, Deus X has been like winning more games. Uh, so let's see, could Leela at least hold a draw with White? Uh, so E4 from Leela, and the, this is the book move, the Scandinavian defense actually. <laughs> Queen takes D5, so Nimzovich had great scorn over this, it was like losing a race of, of development. Like he condemned it as a very bad opening, but we know today it's it's pretty good. And grandmasters like Ian, the Australian grandmaster Ian Rogers, I believe was a great exponent of, of this uh, system as an example. So knight c3, queen d6 is a bit trendy, uh, but is, is like a modern, quite modern treatment of it. Knight f3, knight f6, d4, c6, knight e5, knight bd7, knight c4, queen c7. This position reminds me, it looks as though this could have transposed from uh, a variation in the Slav defense, like um, in Alakine Erva uh, World Championship match games. It does remind me a bit of that. It might not be identical, but it does remind me. a4, g6, we have a5, knight d5, g3 it seems leader is playing for light square pressure here and this potential for a6 might be catch black unaware it's got to be uh, carefully controlled a6 as a potential issue in this position actually uh, leader is offering the double pawns but they might strengthen the center so let's see knight 7 f6 if knight takes c3 is played then this does seem to strengthen white center and maybe it's pretty pleasant overall, despite you know the structural damage. Uh, so actually, the tension's kind of left here after g3. We have this knight supporting the one. Now Lila takes on d5 and plays bishop g2, bishop g7. Both sides castle. Rook e1, bishop e6. And now knight e5 is played. Rook a d8. And now finally here a6. Yeah. If c4, there's an interesting uh, tactical idea at black's disposal, by the way, which is knight e3, quite an invisible kind of tactic, knight e3 hitting the queen, but then bishop takes e5 and black should be fine. Uh, so, but a6 first means this is kind of ruled out here. If knight e3 here, uh, f takes, for example, a takes, it's black that has is worse off here. This looks uh, as though the structure of damage is not worth it there. White's getting, getting a nice advantage so after c3. So uh, on a6 we have b5, queen e2, c5, which is very aggressive play uh, from Deus X. And um, yeah, offering a pawn temporarily to try and get c file pressure. Queen takes b5 is played, c takes d4. Knight c6, and here we start to see that actually this a6 pawn is pretty useful as, as an endgame asset potentially as well. Especially if the bishop's on like the target queening square, this is quite a dangerous setup now for white along this diagonal and with this a6 pawn installed. Uh, we have rook d7 uh, to show the tactical pitfalls. If rook c8, then bishop takes d5, and here knight takes e7 check, and that's the end of the game there. Losing material horribly. So uh, rook d7. We have queen c5. And now bishop f6. Uh, b4. So it seems this looks a little bit uh, risky in principle for the unprotected rook. And black does try and tap into that uh, here with d3. Uh, on rook c8, then white can just firmly support the knight with b5. So we have d3 hitting the rook. And now bishop h6 just offering an exchange sacrifice. Uh, so really interesting uh, decision. Bishop takes, rook takes, d takes c2, 
Queen takes. <clears throat> now, you might think black might have a simplifying possibility here, exploiting the pen with knight takes b4. <clears throat> Pardon me. Why could actually do better than knight takes b4 here? This position is, is slightly better for white, but even better actually is to play queen c3, threatening checkmate. For example, uh, f6, queen takes b4. This is very comfortable for white indeed. Big advantage. So we have rook a8 actually being played. B5 cementing that knight. F6. So white is leader is playing the exchange down. And you might think, well, what are the objectives here? The exchange down. I believe it's to sort of undermine this diagonal and make sure that this pawn can queen, basically. We have h4, which echoes possibilities of h5, but black is not too panicky about that. Rookie eight. Uh rookie one, bishop dots back. Queen c5, so there's a lot of pressure on black's position and on d5 here. And black goes to get the queens off with queen b6. Let's have a look at this. If knight b6, then maybe bishop f4 teasing black to play uh, not this because of rook takes e7. For example, like this is absolutely very, very good for white. But this would tease uh, e5, and after bishop e3, that's nice for white. There's threats like knight takes a7 potentially undermining b6. Uh, so black played queen b6, and we have taking. So the exchange down, but look at this, a protected past a pawn now. Uh, if knight, if the knight had taken, then actually bishop e3 is dangerous anyway, because there's a potential for knight takes a7 and bishop takes b6. E.g., well, this position is, is nice for white. And bishop c4, we can see this mechanism, knight takes a7, which just in time protects b5 as well. This hits the rook, and we've got two connected possibles. This is just winning for white, <laughs> absolutely and completely. So uh, a takes, unfortunately, for black is the lesser evil, but it gives white that protected past pawn. When I say lesser evil, is the lesser of the two bad choices. Bishop h3. Rook c7. So it's a very interesting position with white with the bishop pair, the exchange down, and the protected pass pawn. Very interesting imbalances. Rook a1, e5, rook a3, quite majestic. e4, rook a1, not seemingly, not worried about e3 at the moment. Knight c3, bishop f1, knight d5, rook a4, rook cc8, bishop h3, some probing. Bishop drops back. <laughs> rook c4. We have rook a8 here. On e3 here, technical note, f takes uh, this position. There's knight e7 check. Uh, so that would be uh, very, very good for white. Absolutely winning after a7 there, especially. So uh, we have uh, rook a8. Yeah, black's rooks haven't got that many possibilities all the time. Uh, now we have. Bishop g4. Yeah, the rooks have been harassed. Rook d4. Bishop e2. Bishop c4. Now bishop f1. Yeah, white's got to be careful about knight e2. So something like this is just terrible because there's knight e2 lurking around left behind after king takes. Black's got a big advantage there, e.g. rook d6. Knight takes b5 as well, just undermining c6. And this is just terrible. Uh, this would be better for black. Big advantage to black. So uh, it's important to keep control of b5 and e2. So knight d5, we have rook d2, rook cc8, bishop h3, rook c7, bishop drops back. Yeah, it's a bit of repetition. Seems a bit repetitive. Uh, here, if bishop d2 check, yeah, just safety note, knight e2 check, wins d4. So yeah, bishop comes back. Uh, G4 now. This is a very interesting new plan from Leela in the position uh, to try and weaken black on the dark squares, which means that this bishop is also maybe a bit stronger in some of the lines. Rook c8, bishop c4. <laughs> yeah, some repetition again. Now here, black is tempted to play e3. It seems as though it's a little bit precarious for black here. For example, e3 is very committal, so let's just examine king h8 for a moment. Bishop c4, e3. There's taking and then there's bishop d2. This is just winning uh, for white this position because it's absolutely massive past a pawn. Show how shows the exchange down, but absolutely winning. 
so that, that was King H8 instead of E3. Uh, and you might think, well, instead of E3 there, what about Knight C7? This position is Bishop takes F7. So yeah, this, this looks like a precarious position with Bishop C4. Uh, again, it's, it just seems to be getting more and more awkward for Black. So Black tries E3. And then we have King F3 stopping E2. Bishop's ready to collect on E2. E takes, King takes. So what really has happened here? Black's lost that pawn. But it does mean as though, it does mean really that there's less resistance to hit D5 now, basically. Uh, we have Bishop E6, Bishop D2 for the moment. And now G5 is installed. Nearly a form born, nearly not quite. King g3. Already, white's position is really good here because there's access to d5 to put pressure on d5. Uh, here, <clears throat> um, in sorry, on rook a c8, bishop rook d4. Uh, bishop g2 is also. Interesting to consider here. No, here actually, King G7 in my notes, Bishop C4 here. This position, just as an example, uh, is okay for White as well. White ends up being okay. Small edge, nothing to write home about. Um, but no, there's different ways for White to play that actually. So King H8, King H2. We have some shuffling again. <laughs> And I'll get to an interesting moment after this shuffling. Bear with me. <laughs> okay. Bishop G2 hitting D5 finally. <laughs> and actually, it's winning material. It's just winning material. Look at this disaster diagonal. We've, we've all, of a, all of a sudden, it's, things have clarified. Like a sunny day for white. Things have really clarified here all of a sudden. Sun's broken out, the rain stopped. Knight c7, why it's just winning material with knight e7. I know it's magic. <laughs> if rook takes e7, then taking uh, and here winning the knight is, is very pleasant for white. Uh, and yes, yeah, so what does what does white actually do? Uh, in this line, by the way, um, sorry, instead of rook takes, bishop takes, say knight takes, then check. And here, uh, this is big advice to White. So uh, yeah, King F7. We have Bishop takes, Rook takes. There is played. Knight C6. Bishop F5. Rook B3. Bishop E4. And now Bishop F4. This is really nasty for Black. This possession. Black plays Bishop takes C6. On knight takes b5, then there's knight e5 check protected by the bishop, so it doesn't matter about king e6 or anything. And white can just take on b5 with a big advantage. So um so bishop f4, we have bishop takes c6, bishop takes c7, and it's just too dangerous these two connected past pawns. Black actually gives up the bishop here. If we look at this, if the bishop went back somewhere, then this is just absolutely winning for white. White's going to just uh, play a7 uh, or maybe b6 to stop any blockade, takes and then b7. Uh, so it's it's absolutely winning. Black uh, decides to sort of just give up a piece here with bishop takes b5. But this position is lost for black. Even though white's down to the last pawn, the bishop is of the same colour as the potential queening square of this pawn. So even if black got uh, a, a, a pawn sack. This this bishop's gonna help this pawn queen. Um, and actually, this so rook takes was played. Uh, and here the game was adjudicated as a win for white under TCEC rules, plus six point five assessed for the last eight uh, ply. So that's half moves, eight half moves. Uh, so game adjudicated as a win for white. As an example, let's just give this as an example. King comes to f5. All it needs is a zugzwang, so the king can just manoeuvre, just to get into the position and win h7 and then g6. Yeah, it's it's a pretty trivial win, actually. Uh, so, yeah, because the bishop's on the same colour as the queening square, it doesn't matter about things like h5. You can just take en passant. 
even if the king was able to yeah it can be driven out so uh let's go back to the final position uh so a very very important win uh, for Lila to have any chances of promotion out of this division she needs to start winning there's been some speculation i got this funny email this morning that Lila has started winning well that was funny in itself after the draw death uh, but also it seems the gpu might not have been at 100 percent uh usage because, because of temperature concerns and also there's been this driver update so i don't know anymore if it's temperature graphics card drivers gpu percentage usage i don't know if leela's under perfect conditions but the tournament's very very difficult because the leela ratio is like 0.25 meaning that the traditional engines are seeing a huge amount more basically uh one would be kind of considered fair but it's well below that so these are very very hard conditions but i don't think the high temperatures really help the graphics cards at the moment now i know that sounds like a lame <laughs> excuse but it seems to be the case because there's been some inconsistent results coming up and you'll see in the next game what i mean uh, so i'm not sure really what's going on in tsec but also uh Lila's managed to actually there's been a a crash of some sort in one game which might not have been Lila's fault so that might need to be replayed as well it's weird stuff going on at tsec at the moment uh this is an interesting game i'll show you another one soon comments questions like shares appreciated thanks so much